What we try in those guidelines is uh, to set up clear recommendations which patients are suitable for renal denervation. And we again interpreted the results coming from the simplicity trials and we were saying sticking to those inclusion and exclusion criteria, patients with an office blood pressure above 160, above 150 for type 2 diabetics, despite the triple antihypertensive and optimized antihypertensive drug treatment including a diuretic, patients should have lifestyle modification before uh, patients must be treatable, so the renal anatomy should be suitable for the denervation, which means no renal artery stenting, no significant relevant stenosis. And also, as we know, there are in a larger proportion of patients with resistant hypertension secondary and treatable causes, such as endocrinopathies or renal artery stenosis or uh, hyperallosteronism, which can be treated, amorbus con. That must be excluded before you consider a patient for renal denervation. We are getting a lot of patients referred with milder forms of hypertension. And of course, patients having their pill burden and not want to take their antihypertensive, they're reading in newspapers that there's a new treatment modality. However, we have to clearly look into the evidence and say, at the moment, resistant hypertension is one of the diseases where you can indicate or interpret the increased blood pressure as a marker, as a surrogate of increased sympathetic activity. So by denervating those patients, we assume a high blood pressure reduction. And it has nicely been shown that the blood pressure lowering effect after denervation is linear correlated to the systolic blood pressure at baseline, which, which means the higher the baseline blood pressure is, the greater the reduction is. So a patient coming into our office with a blood pressure of 140 will not have a drop of 40 or 30 millimeters of mercury. Heart failure is one of the hot topics, I would say, because we had to learn in the in the past that sympathetic activity, especially especially in heart failure patient, is responsible for the high cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. So the higher the sympathetic outflow is, the greater uh, the morbidity and mortality is in that group. So. Um, we have also learned from beta blocker trials that we can reduce by antagonism of these sympathetic nerves that we can reduce mortality up to 60%. So it is reasonable to speculate that decreasing sympathetic activity by renal denervation could positively influence the disease state of uh, chronic heart failure. But the question is open whether that works if it's safe, if, if it's feasible. We are just right now conducting a European trial where we'll look in, in 100 patients. We will randomize one-to-one -one control and renal denervation and we'll see the impact of that treatment.